Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Oh, I thank God for you being with me on tonight. This is Bible study night, Wednesday night Bible study. Oh, it's such an exciting time to get into the word. It's nothing like the word to lift you, to give you what you need in this hour that so much is trying to crush you. But the word of God will begin to revive your soul. Oh, and you'll find yourself with wings as an eagle. You'll be able to fly above all the adversity and the difficulties that may come your way. I'm so happy to be with you tonight. I'm here with the word from God for our Bible study. We're going to be in Joshua, the first chapter. I want you to get it, verses 6, 7, 8, 9. Joshua 1, verses 6 through 9. Now, we're going to go through some other scriptures as well, but that's our foundation scripture for tonight. Oh, glory to God. Well, I'm excited about what God is doing, and I'm excited about what he's doing in your life. In the midst of all, God is blessing you. And I don't have any doubt about that because those that would dare to allow their relationship with, with, with Christ Jesus to lead God, uh, you in the direction and in the path that you should go, he's leading you to success. That's what he does. Hallelujah. Through the spirit. Mm -hmm. He leads you to success. God is so good. So tonight, I want to talk about developing the courage to win in the game of life. Let me tell you, in life, it's choices. With choices, you're either going to make choices that causes you to succeed or causes you to find out that there's a better way to get it done. Because failure is not failure. It simply means there's a better way to get it done. So I want to talk tonight about developing the courage mm, to win in the game of life. We all want to be winners, don't we? I know. that God put that in us from the beginning of time. Whew. Do you know that the I can't is a very common phrase that we hear today. Oh, everywhere, everywhere, almost everyone, including most Christians. The I can't is I can't, I can't, I can't, I can'ts are everywhere. And do you know what? The I can'ts that you allow in your life, they'll create walls and they'll create barriers that will come to keep you, separate you from achieving the fullness, uh -huh, everything that God has uh -huh, for you. You won't receive the fullness of the way that God wants you to live, uh -huh, and that's successfully. So let's look at the scriptures on tonight, all right? Uh, Joshua 1, I know you should have it by now, verse 6, 7, 8, and 9. I want to read it tonight. Be strong and of a good courage. Oh, that's good, isn't it? For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. This is Joshua. Moses was dead, and Joshua was taken over leadership. There's so much in that has passed away. So much has happened. It physically, jobs, financially. Oh, so much has taken place in households. So much that you know what? The door is shut. That is over. That has ended. So many situations and circumstances that have taken place in your life. Oh, let me tell you. And it's no sense to try. I just wish it was like that again. I just wish I had that again. I just, I just, I just know. Then the next thing, I just can't make it without, I just can't do it. And I, no, stop it right now. Be strong. Be of good courage. We're going to talk about developing the courage to win in the game of life. Mm. Okay. Verse seven, verse seven. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. 
All right, what is it saying there? What Moses taught was wonderful. It, it was necessary. That was the foundation. God, what, what has happened to you in the past? God uses that, hey, to, for you to learn from it, for you to build on it. Oh, yes, he uses it. But he's just saying to you, I'm not going to move in that way anymore. Oh, there's a new place I'm taking you to. And God wants you to begin to move into that direction by allowing him to be that foundation that brings you into that rock solid relationship with him. And thereby he has to remove all obstacles, all uh, difficulties out of your way. Oh, yes, he does. And you know what? I tell you right now, he's getting rid of distractions as well. Distractions are those things that are just pop up. They just pop up. <laughs> distractions. And so we see here, Verse 7, he's letting us know uh, what was done by Moses was foundational. It was necessary. And uh, he went on to let them know that, you know, that was going to be what would give them the ability to move into their lands of inheritance. Joshua was leading the children uh, and the grandchildren of those who had died in the wilderness because they refused to go forth into the good land that God has for them. They just continue to murmur and complain and be dissatisfied. You can miss your blessing being in that state of murmuring and complaining and being dissatisfied. You can miss the timing of God. And God had been speaking. God had been showing himself in miraculous ways. God had been doing great and mighty things. And you can miss the timing of God. And in missing that timing, you may think life is over. You may think this is it. But no, God has shut the door on that and letting you know, I'm going to do a whole new thing in your life. All I need you to do is to develop the courage to win in this game of life. In this year and the coming years, you're going to have to begin to engage. You're going to have to begin to participate uh -huh, in the miracles, in the great things, in the extraordinary occurrence that God is bringing to pass in your life. You're going to have to begin to move in the direction that he would lead and guide and direct you. Oh, it doesn't take being deep. It doesn't take me, oh, well, I don't hear from God. Let me tell you, God will lead you and you won't realize it. You know you've been there until after the fact. And you Say, oh my goodness, <laughs> that was God. <laughs> oh my goodness, because you know it was not you. And so this is where we are today, and this is where the people of God were here in Joshua. All right, let's go on to verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. See, I told you, you got to participate. If you participate in this, it's God said now, and then you shall make your way prosperous. See, God wants to do this thing through you. I want you to know there are some things that God is going to do as he leads you into that that he has for you. And then there's some things God's not going to do until you begin to engage and do that that he has instructed you to do. Did you get that? That's exactly where we are. Mm, God is so good. And as you begin to move in that that God has for you, I want you to know that you're going to begin to see God bring an accomplishment and achievement through you as never before. But you're going to have to develop the courage. So that's why we're talking here tonight. The Bible teaches us that you can accomplish anything that God says you can if you just have the courage to believe it. It says it throughout the Bible. And then, you know what? You find out as you read, the absence of courage will also bring an absence of hope in your life. <laughs> yeah. And where there is no hope, there is no motivation or drive. This is what happens. That's how the enemy attacks. Proverbs 18 and 14, the living Bible says, a man's courage can begin to sustain him. But a broken body, when courage dies, what hope is left? Oh, my God. When your spirit gets broken, oh, my God. He said a man's courage can sustain him, but his broken body, huh, it'll begin to, the, when, when your spirit gets broken, let me tell you, you can't move, you can't do the things that you would do. It just seems like you, you, you know, you're frozen in time. That's what happens. The enemy comes to attack. He comes to steal your hope. He comes to steal everything. That, see, where there is no courage, there is no hope. 
So yes, he wants to come in and break your spirit. Discourage. Oh, come on. Discourage you and take away your hope. Okay, the message translation, uh -huh, I like it. It said, a healthy spirit conquers adversity. But what can you do when the spirit is crushed? Oh, so, uh, oh. This is why we see so often in the Bible that God is telling his people, be of good courage. And I'm here tonight, and I'm here to say what God has given me to deliver here tonight in this Wednesday night Bible study. Be of good courage courage. See, the enemy will try to crush your spirit. Well, how does he do it? Because everything you, that you're moving forward in, he tries to discourage you. Uh -huh. He tries to take away your hope. He tries to move you from you uh, holding on and believing it's going to happen. It's going to take. The devil is alive. And then there's some things that have happened and he'll try to remove it, try to take it away. Let me tell you, you better develop the courage of God on the inside of you because the enemy will try to break and crush your spirit. Otherwise, take away your hope. Oh, my God. And it takes courage to believe that you can be a winner today. Oh, and any other day in this world. Oh, but today particularly, I'm telling you right now, because there are so many impossibilities out here. But let me tell you, you need to eat impossibilities for breakfast. <laughs> Why? Because you got to know that you know that you know that in spite of it all, I'm not going to allow the enemy to crush me. No, 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 no. I'm going, you got to be resilient. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to arise. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to keep going. I shall not be broken. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter about all the pressures that come. They're so great to try to keep you from overcoming that that God has for you. But the devil is a lie. You see so much on TV about divorce, about addictions, uh, uh, so much happening to people, their unemployment, the financial situations, uh, families uh, not having anywhere to go, a loss of property, all of this going on today. It's enough to crush your spirit. If you allow that to enter in through your ear gate, see, that's how it gets in, through Mm -hmm. The ear gate. If you allow it to happen, oh, I'm telling you. Oh, we're going to talk about all of that. <laughs> Let me tell you. There's something that the late President John F. Kennedy said in one of his speeches. He said, um, life isn't fair. I thought about, yeah, he's right. <laughs> when he spoke that, life is not fair. Favor isn't fair uh, either. Oh, yeah, life will come with all kinds of circumstances, all kinds of things. And I want you to know, yeah. Yeah, life is not fair, but you need courage so then that the abundant favor of God will shine forth upon your life. Glory to God. One definition of courage is the ability to conquer or to overcome fear. Mm. I say it all the time. Your back may feel like jelly and your legs may feel as though they won't hold you up. But I'm here to tell you right now, you can make it. I love the story of Joshua, the scriptures we are standing upon, our base scriptures for tonight, because it's a great example of a man who had to conquer his fears in order to be successful. He was human, like you and I, and believe me, you, when it seems like Moses was gone, when that door is shut, when those comfortable well, I say comfortable places that you're used to, when those places and people that were uh, very structural in your life and the door has been shut on that god is saying you know what i'm gonna do a new thing i'm going i'm going to begin to build all fresh and no new for you i'm going to take you into a level of success that you've never been before oh that's what god wants you to do he wants to move you into that place that you've never been before you will excel why? Because he want to take you from being ordinary to extraordinary oh that you break through into an exceptional life in Jesus name <laughs> so God, Joshua, when we read verses six through nine in the first chapter there, he's just talking about be strong, be of a good courage. That's what he's saying. Uh, and the new international version of the Bible says, don't be terrified. Do you know there are difficulties and circumstances that Satan will present before you? It, it, it's, it's just terrifying. He's a terrorist for sure. And it's terrifying. That's why so many people, suicide and people that just give it up and don't want to go. The enemy crushes the spirit. Oh, but the task that God gives Joshua, it looks impossible. 
There, when you begin to step out into your dream, there are those things that you look at to step into and do. It's overwhelming many times. But don't look at that. Come on, come on, wait, we're going to talk about it. Oh, the task that God is giving you. Yes, I know it's big. Oh, but let me tell you, the Lord let him know what to do. He said, follow the ministry of Moses. Mm, that's really what he said in those verses right there. Follow the ministry of Moses. Do begin to pray. Consult me. Get with me. And oh, daily. Follow the ministry of Moses. You need to connect up with the ministry. You need to connect up with a woman or man of God that is hey, giving that word. And when that word is given, oh yes, miracles will happen in your life. When that word is given, oh yes, God will begin to move and, and bring those special times of, of, of healing and deliverance. Oh yes, there are times that God will move in your life and he'll even bring instruction as well as reproof and rebuke. Oh, but if you stay right there where God placed, placed you, I'm telling you, it's going to come a time that there are going to be moments, oh, just you and God, that God will begin to come in and lift you up when the enemy tried to take you down. That's why those times when you're all by yourself, your hand will go up. Those times when you're just sitting and thinking on his goodness, oh, it's not something that you purpose to do, but oh, those special moments, just you and God, that those times that you should have lost your mind, but it didn't happen because of those special moments with God. At those times when you know that, oh my God, you should have just given up, but you did not because of those special moments with God. Oh yes, it's those times as you begin to continue to walk with him, as you walk with him as the miracles take place, as you walk with him, as you see the miraculous happening of healing and deliverance taking place, as you walk with God and you see the impossible things manifest before your very eyes as Joshua did in the wilderness experience as he followed the ministry of Moses. God has a plan for you. It's not always from a pulpit, but God has given you a ministry and that ministry is for you to share that that God has done in your life with someone else. That's why you need to get under an anointing so that when you speak, you can speak forth from power with the right intentions and a good heart. When you begin to speak, you can speak forth and everything you say, God's going to back you up because of your relationship with Jesus. Oh, God is a good God. And so this is where Joshua was because the task that God had given him was to take over 3 million people. Oh my God, into the promised land. Oh my goodness. It was a huge, huge assignment. And God has given assignments today. I'm telling you one thing, there's no instructional manual that comes with raising children to take them on over into adulthood. And hold it, it doesn't stop there. And you keep on, but you know what? God will lead you. He'll guide you. It's a task, but you know what? He will also instruct you and teach you, uh-oh, how to profit. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter who you are. Joshua, he was battling fear of failure. You can believe that just as you do as well when God begins to move you in areas of the unknown. Oh, glory to God. No wonder God didn't tell him one time, but several times God continued to say to him there in Joshua, be of good courage. And I'm saying to you tonight, be of good courage. <laughs> glory to God. And it's going to take courage. Let me tell you. Not only have we entered over, come on out of the, the pandemic and all, and the door is shut, but there are more battles to win. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's more adversity to conquer. Oh, yes, 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 yes. There are more enemies to defeat. There's more that's coming that God's going to do. And you're going to have to uh, use your courage. It's got to be developed to face all that God, the greatness that God has for you. But it's going to be good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's going to be good. And so God knows it's going to take courage that you not be moved in the midst of all that would happen. God knew that it would take courage for Joshua in the coming days and all that he would experience and all of the betrayal and all of the unexpected and everything coming before. But if you read there on through Joshua, you'll see that he conquered everything that God had given him to do. He began to move in it. And whenever he saw that he wasn't able to move in the victory that God had promised. He didn't get angry with God. 
No, no, no. He didn't say, oh, forget all of that with Moses. No, he didn't. He prayed. And he said, God, I, I need to, something is wrong here. Uh -huh. You've given us victory. Now we didn't get the victory. What's going on? Of course I'm paraphrasing. And you and I have to be like that too. You don't get angry with God. You don't get angry with the preacher. No, you stop and examine your ways. You consider your ways. Lord, wait a minute. You consider what's going on. Show me how to P-R-O-F-I-T because something is wrong here. We have been getting the victory. We've won every battle. Then all of a sudden this one and God did show him where there was sin in the camp. And he let them know just where it was. Uh -huh. There can be weak links around you. There can be those things that you need to build up. I call it get your checklist out. See where it is. Are you tithing? Are you giving offerings in obedience to God? Doing it the way God says do it. You know, are you getting back in the church? Forget not to assemble yourselves together, you know, and it, right here, like we are tonight. And then Sunday mornings at 11. That's wonderful. We're coming together. There's a checklist to get out. You know, are you, are you serving others? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Are you pursuing the promise? And then when you begin to look and you begin to check and you begin to see uh -huh, the checklist, you know, because God said just to follow me, all you got to do is just do good. Just walk before me. Be humble. See, you look for that humility. You look to see, am I being obedient? Oh, oh that's it. And when you get through doing your checklist, let me tell you right now, you, that will be gone. You won't be frightened. Neither will you be dismayed. The enemy will not be able to perplex you. He will not be able to mess with your mind in any way. Now, I'm not saying it won't happen, but you'll know what to do. There's a son said, I go to the rock. You will know how to go to the word of God. Today, the way we have everything at our fingertips, all you have to do is pick up your phone, pick up your tablet, go to your computer. Oh, yes. Put the word in that the enemy is attacking you with and put scripture behind it. So many scriptures will come forth on that screen. Ah, oh, let me tell you, you will have the word. That's, that's your weaponry right there. That's how you fight. Hmm. And courage will come because the enemy will try to bring fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. So he don't want you walking by faith. Fear robs you of courage, but faith fills you. It fills you with creativity. God begins to show you a way out of no way. Oh, he began to give you things to do. This. Oh my goodness. You know it was God because it was, it was just so obvious to be done. Or sometimes it's those hidden things that God reveals unto you and you get it done. I mean, he can move in a million and more ways in order to bring the blessing to us that fear is trying to keep you from stepping into. And God gives you the courage to move on. There's something about when God begins to reveal and show you the path that he would have you to go. It strengthens you. It motivates you. It gives you a drive. Oh, yes, on the inside that you begin to move and you do not fear. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, that ear gate, I was talking about that earlier. You know, you have to be mindful of the voices that you're listening to. You must, you know, you need to make sure that you're listening to someone that is walking in an anointing or someone that's reading their Bible. Okay, I put it like that. Because when you read the word and you, you're around those that's reading the word, whatever you're coming up against, they're going to have the word to give you. That's a blessing right there. When you've got the word that's offered to you, that word is mighty. That word is powerful. It's like a hammer. It'll crush what the enemy is trying to do in your life. Oh, that's why God told Joshua in Joshua 1 and 8, thou shall meditate the word day and night. I, now, I'm not talking about just having your head down in the word. And, oh, God, you never bring it up for air. I'm, no, let's not get kooky, crazy, and flaky. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm saying when you begin to get in the word on a daily basis, okay? Spending time in the word of God on a daily basis. If you do that, faith is going to come. Oh, let me tell you. And oh, and so will courage. Huh? Let me tell you right now. And that courage comes and you believe God. And you know that nothing is impossible. All because of your daily time that you spend in the word of God. It, it's a blessing to do so. Oh, glory to God. When you do that, 
just as we read Joshua 1, 6, 7, 8, 9, as he read that God was letting him know, you spend time in the word of God day and night night and observe to do all that is written therein then you shall make your way prosperous then you shall have good success what was god doing god was showing him how to be a winner god was letting him know how to conquer you might say you know i've been trying but look like start reading your bible every day you'd be surprised of how it will begin to make you so alert and take you right into being a winner in everything oh yes from the simplest to the greatest You'll have a confidence down on the inside of you that nothing is impossible with God. And you identify when it's the Lord or you identify when it's something that you need to do. Uh-huh. I, I, so I take I take that area out that sometimes then when you say you identify as the Lord right away, a lot of people pull back from that because you don't feel worthy. But let me tell you right now, if you start spending time daily. In the word of God. Oh, you haven't got to read a book, two, three books. You haven't got to read. You don't even have to read a whole chapter. If you start reading one verse from the word of God, it may be the same ones for several days. It may be a verse that you're meditating on and you begin to commit to memory. And it may take you more than one day. That Your spirit, as small as, your spirit is leading you to what? Stay right there. Uh-huh. Go right back to that scripture. It's just feeding you, feeding you, feeding you. And you will see that God will begin to give you courage that nothing is impossible. We see so many stories like Joshua's in the Bible. And they were placed there so that you and I could develop courage. God wants you to be courageous. He wants you to be courageous because he wants you to have courage. Uh -huh. Develop it in your life. This is how you develop it. Reading the word of God in your life so you can win at this game of life. Romans. 15 and 4. I want you to turn there, the NIV version, Romans 15 and 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through all of that that's in the past, all that's in the past, look at the end of it, the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Mm. This is why you want to read your Bible every day. This is why you want to meditate upon it. This is why you want to apply the scripture that you have read, begin to implement it in your life. And, and as you as you begin to read the word of God, then God will begin to be able to communicate with your spirit the more and teach you how to P-R-O-F-I-T, knowing that nothing is impossible unto you. Talking about developing Courage. Got to read the Bible in order to do that. You need to read a verse, at least a verse, every day, daily, daily. Mm. Oh, yes. Because without spending time in the Word of God every day, little problems will begin to look like oh, giant problems. But if you spend time in the Word of God daily, yeah, 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 you'll begin to see your big God. And your problem's really little. It is but a little thing. <laughs> and if you begin to do that and not allow the enemy to show you a big problem, and because you don't have any word in you and you haven't been meditating and applying that word in your life, let me tell you, you don't see God as big as he should be. And thereby, the enemy will bring a negative attitude upon you. And the negative attitude, the root of any negative attitude is fear. Fear of being loved. Fear of being rejected. Fear of not achieving. Any attitude, a negative attitude, the base of it is fear. Oh, And once this happens, you'll lose your motivation to win. Yeah, it goes. Yeah, yeah. You just feel so defeated. And one thing that being in the Word does for you, it'll help you to stay focused. It'll, it'll keep you from allowing the enemy to distract you. Those pop-ups that I was talking about, you think about pop-up, pop-up, and you look there, and uh, those pop-ups will come by enemy. And what, they, what the enemy wants you to do, he wants to keep you from being focused to see the big God. He wants to make that situation pop up and just, huh, 
make it through emergencies, make it come through those things that say, you got to see about me right now. But when you begin to get in the word of God, God will give you a peace and he'll teach you how to profit. He will teach you how to get the victory in those situations that seem impossible. God will show you a way out. Oh my God, and cause you to win. God is a good God. He doesn't want us to lose. God doesn't want you to lose. Not ever. He always wants you to win. Even in the midst of defeat, God will give you the victory. <laughs> oh, yes, he did it for Joshua. Remember, Joshua said, Lord, I need a little more time uh, to get the victory in this battle. He was saying that because in the olden Bible days, when the sun went down, whoever was on top, they were the winners. Whoever was the one that was uh, moving greater was the winners. And Joshua said, I just need a little more time because I'll get the victory here. I can be a winner here. It, I know I can do it. I know I can. No more I can't. I know I can. And all he did, God turned the sundial back. Let me tell you, God will do a miracle in your life. He will intervene on your behalf when you begin to pray to him, when you begin to ask God for what you have need of. And simply, you know, tell God what you have need of. Make your request known unto him. Oh, through prayer and supplication. And watch God answer you. And it'll be a peaceful answer, a peaceful resolution. Peaceful prosperity. Oh, yes. No division in any kind of way. Oh, God will just fix things in your soul and your spirit, and it'll be peaceful. Ah, God is so good. Glory to God. And you'll find yourself being motivated. You'll find your drive coming back. Oh, you'll find yourself because you refuse to see the pop-up that Satan's trying to pop up before you, but you are focused. So you look beyond. Come on here. Glory to God. And you see the big thing. You begin to see a great God. You begin to see God taking you into that that is impossible and making it possible. It may be impossible with man, but it is possible with God. And you begin to move forward in your spirit. He said, I'm not going to be crushed. I'll not be defeated. I'll not have a negative attitude. But I, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh, you know the word that I got? Ooh, I'm going to be strong. And I'm going to be of a good courage. I'm not going to allow my spirit to be crushed. I'm going to be motivated. I'm going to have drive. And as you begin to do that, I'm telling you that problem just shrinks, 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 shrinks. And God just began to be magnified, magnified magnified. Oh my goodness, glory to God. Then what happened? As you stay focused, it enables you to see what others cannot see. No. Oh my God. Oh, glory to God. And when you do that, I'm telling you, great things are going to happen. You know what? The ego from five, um, I was looking at from five miles flying high, five miles now up in the sky. He can look down and he can see a field mouse in the grass. Swoop down. Mm -hmm. Swoop down upon it. Go back up. I'm telling you, when you stay focused, there may be different uh, difficulties and circumstances and problems you have to deal with. But when you stay focused, you don't let the enemy disturb your peace. You deal with that situation according to the word of God. And then what? You keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. You keep moving. You don't let it hinder you. Oh, from, from soaring. You don't let it hinder you from reaching the heights that God has for you. That's what will happen to you. Glory to God. See, because that eagle sees what others cannot see. God will show you just how you can get the victory. Where others say, no, that can't be done. I don't see how you're going to do that. But see, this is what happens when you get into the word of God daily. Mm, you begin to look through the eye of faith. You begin to say, I just believe God. Oh, I'm going to forget everything behind the door shut. I'm going to look forward to those things that are before. Then I'm going to press. Isn't that what Paul said? Toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, my God. You begin to see what others cannot see mm -mm. because they're not in the word daily. They don't have that relationship built. Oh, yes. Oh, let me tell you, when you begin to develop your courage oh, for this game of life, you're getting in the word daily, you get focused up, you start seeing what others cannot see. 
Oh, God is so good. Woo. God begin to give you that eye of faith and you start moving forth in the greatness of God. Oh, yes. Others only see negative situations and circumstances. You see the greatness of God. Ooh, working behind the scenes. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Changing your circumstances into something positive. Turning the whole situation around. Ooh, glory to God. Ah, others cannot see that. But that's what you see. So that's what motivates you. That's what drives you. People may ask you, I don't see how you made it. Oh, you know, you just have to answer. Oh, but God, God did it. God did it. Because when you get into his word every day, there is a strength that is not natural that God will give you that you can overcome and keep moving forward. Only God. Mm. Ooh, when he does that, you're developing a courage to win in this game of life. Oh, once a very famous motivator said, you can accomplish anything you desire, providing you are willing to pay the price. Mm. So I submit to you that the price that you'll have to pay is that you will begin to spend time in God's word every day, that you will take the time every day to read at least the scripture every day. You know, some of you are just running on films, films that you're running on from Wednesday night, films you're running on from Sunday morning. Have you stopped and gone over any scripture that has been given? Have you stopped and taken the time to meditate upon that word? Or did you just get it? No, Whew. because it is anointed. Yes, this word is anointed. And that anointed, oh, it inspires you. That anointed, oh my goodness, it encourages you. But you know what? You need to allow your eyes to begin to look at the word. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. You need to begin to look upon the word of God and it will bring help and healing to you in every area of your life. This is where your winning starts. When you will begin to take time in God's word every day and you'll begin to see God to bind up those, those areas and those places in your life that it just seems like, oh my God, just so hurtful. Oh my God, just seems so impossible for it to happen, for it to take place. Because time in the word of God every day, that's a wise investment. That's a wise investment. Even if you have to get up early, very early. I can remember my husband and I, we raised a lot of children, not only our own, but many others. And I tell you, and then when the church started, we even had more. I had to get up early in the morning. All of those kids that back in that time, they were of school age and they had to be gotten ready. They had to be taken to school, all of that. Oh, but let me tell you, I got up early, early, early. It's a wise investment. If you have to get up early, just get up earlier. I say it not from theory, but from practice. Whatever you've got to do to make the time to get into the word of God every day, it works. And I'm telling you, that will continue on. Uh -huh. As you continue your relationship with God, then that will continue as well. Because that is a that's a principle that you don't never need to pull down. I yet do that. I get up early. Oh, the kids have grown and got kids of their own now. Oh, let me tell you, the church is growing and moving forward. But still, that time with God, that time that I invest in him, it's a wise investment. Oh, it gives me courage to win. The enemy doesn't ever stop with trying to defeat you. He doesn't ever stop with pop-ups. He doesn't ever stop with adversity and difficulties, and you can't ever stop spending time in the Word of God every day, because God's going to develop courage oh, oh, that you can win and be successful in all that you do. Oh, glory to God. I found out also time in the Word of God every day, it prepares me for whatever may come my way that day. Some people say, I don't read it till late at night and I'm ready to go to bed. You know what? It's a choice. I read mine at the top of the day. Do you know what? Uh, that whole day, it takes me on through that whole day. The unexpected may come. Those things that I didn't expect to happen. Those things that I didn't even foresee happening because I already taken care of something or whatever may take place. I'm telling you right now. When you get into that word, it will prepare you for what may come your way during that day. Oh, my goodness. And I tell you, you'll be able, you'll have the strength, the motivation, and the drive. Oh, 
<laughs> that you can move forward uh, in that that God has given you and be successful in it with the word in your heart and the word in your mouth. Oh, my God, my God. No mountain will ever look big to you. The word in your heart and the word in your mouth. Certainly, just like Paul declared boldly in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ, huh? which strengtheneth me. Come on, say it with me. Come on. We're going to get rid of all of this that the enemy is trying to do against you. Say it with me now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Guess what? You just got rid of the I can't. Come on, give God some glory. <laughs> Ooh, give the devil a black eye. Give him glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Developing courage to win at the game of life. Give God glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give God the praise. <laughs> it's time to give. It's offering time. Oh, it's time to win through your giving. Oh, let me tell you, when you pursue promise, serve others, and you're a giver, you dare to give an offering in the name of the Lord. I'm here to tell you, you shall not be defeated because you're giving the devil a rope for dope. Ah, you're going to have everything that God said you can have. If you follow that, I have given unto you tonight. Get into the word. Read the word of God every day, daily, daily, daily. And I tell you, you'll start seeing what others don't see. I tell you right now, motivation and a drive will come. Ooh, you'll be so courageous. There'll be nothing the enemy can do uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, to cause you to fail. In the midst of defeat, God will give you victory. Carol Dixon, 101. God is so good. Developing the courage to win at this game of life. Obey God in your giving tonight. Ah, they've got it on the bottom of the screen, the different platforms that you may use in order to be obedient to God. Be obedient. Do it like God says do it. You don't know what he says? Give your best. It always works for me. I'm telling you. And I can only preach that that I have experienced. I refuse and will not preach from theory. The word of God is just too good and too full of integrity for that. Oh, God will do just what he said he would do. Now you go on and take on the wings of an eagle. Begin to see what others cannot see. Let God reveal to you the unknown. Let God uncover that that's covered up. Let him show you what he wants to show you. Oh, let him lead you into victory. Be strong. Be of good courage. Come on. Get motivated. Get the drive. Read your word every day. And watch God give you victory, unprecedented victory, in ways that you've never seen before. God will do this just for you. Why? You're developing the courage to win in this game of life. God bless you, and I love you. I'll see you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, right here. <laughs>